Charles, what are your thoughts on communism? Uh, it's the greatest evil mankind's ever come up with. It's a system that always converges to the same inevitable pattern and an indoctrination of people around a great degree of comfort of not having objective reality, but rather subjective government mandated reality and a tolerance of having super centralized institutions make arbitrary decisions over resources and life and truth. And every time it's been applied, uh, you look no further to the cultural revolution of Mao in the 1960s and the 20 million people who died there or the purchase of Stalin or what Castro did in Cuba. Uh, in every case, there's death, sadness, and fear. And an entire generation or many generations of people who are victimized and dehumanized and turned into drones. Uh, it's antithetical to everything I stand for as a person. And I think it's a very dark and evil philosophy. And it's a fundamental misunderstanding of capitalism. Capitalism is an objectively neutral system. It's neither evil nor good. It's just garbage in, garbage out. If you have just one currency and the way you earn it is through short-term optimization that destroys the world long-term, that's what you get. If you have different incentive models, you'll get different outcomes. Have two currencies, future money and today money. And the future money you can only earn by making the world of the future a better place. You need both to survive. Capitalism will optimize there. Everybody's an environmentalist because it's the profitable thing to do. Communism says that can't happen, even though we have massive amounts of counterexamples to it. And capital and communism basically says, well, the only way to solve it is to super centralize around some sort of state to get us to a utopia that never comes. And anybody who opposes it must be destroyed. And it's always the same pattern. Indoctrination, institutionalization, criminalization, and gulagging. Those are your four steps in the communist pyramid. And you can put postmodernism on it or this woke cult or any of these things. They're all cut from the same cloth. They institutionalize, they indoctrinate people into believing crazy things. They remove objective reality. They institutionalize the subjective reality and the ever-changing definitions and power structures criminalized groups by creating the other and deplatforming and denying people. And then the people they can't deplatform because they're too powerful, they gulag until eventually society adheres and complies. And then you end up with the Stasi state in Eastern Germany. So yeah, Jordan Peterson and I get probably along uh, very, very, very well in that sense. Charles, are you libertarian or leaning towards an anarcho-capitalist? I'm not Michael Malice. Uh, but I am a, a libertarian at heart, but I do understand that you need some notion of governance. So I'm a re recovering libertarian in a certain respect. And by the way, it's a fire, great description of communism and defensive capitalism, lurching that way is the wrong path. You know, it's, it's one of those things is so seductive, communism, because it says we're all equal, we're all egalitarian. It's like, oh, but and because certain people have unfair advantages, we have to punish them and give you know, from Peter to Paul. And it's so seductive, especially for young people who don't really understand how systems and incentives work. And they have this sense of fairness ingrained within them. And they and they think in a very sum zero way. Do you think we live in a capitalist society? No, we don't. We live in a cronyist society. Definitely don't agree with communist ideals. I hate that somebody keeps saying it's evil. It just makes it easier to do so. I don't know, man. Any system that kills hundreds of millions of people, it seems pretty evil to me. You know, what's bizarre, and Peterson does mention this, every single person, when they see the swastika in the Nazi regime, they feel completely comfortable with saying that that is an evil regime. Rightfully so. Killed 6 million people. 60 million people died in World War II. There's no doubt of the evilness of that regime. But then we put the hammer and sickle and say communism is equal or greater than, and it's evil to commun to Nazism. Because, oh, hang on, hang on, we, 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 we can't go that far. But then you look at Pol Pot, and then you look at Mao, and then you look at Stalin, and you start summing up the numbers, and you realize that the magnitude is higher. It's hundreds of millions of people. And the trauma is multi-decade, not just... 1933 to 1945, but from the inception of the revolution all the way through up to the 80s and 90s in certain places like North Korea is still ongoing. 
And then you say, I hate that so many keep saying it's evil. Why can't you get there? What, what's your threshold? I, I'm, you have death camps. You have tens of millions of people die. You have arbitrary rules and those who violate them get punished. You have many examples of the just destructive nature of the philosophy, like Chernobyl, for example. It's a, it's a perfect epitome of how damaging and dangerous these philosophies can be. You have cults of personality. You have living dictators like Kim Jong-un. You have people that are very comfortable with mass criminalization of arbitrary conduct. And this is not hypothetical. It either happened, it's continuing to happen, or in certain cases, there's advocates that want it to now happen here. And yet you can't get there and say it's evil, but if you were to see the swastika, if someone put up that flag, you'd say it's the worst thing in the world. It's, I think, indoctrination that causes this problem. And I, I agree with Peterson in this respect. It's um, just bizarre to me. Um, I don't like any philosophy that says some external force has the right to break down in my door, take everything from me, and then decide what to give me, and then tell me what truth is. And if my ability to derive truth from objective scientific principles is different from what the state says, I become the other. I become a regressive, I, you know, a, a, a counter-revolutionary, uh, reactionary, and then I get purged. Look no further, 1967, and what happened during the Cultural Revolution as they stormed the universities and they grab academics and put steel hats on their heads and have these show trials and say, oh, you taught Einstein's laws of relativity you know, and beat them to death for doing that. You know, it's, it's like, wow. This is the question to ask. How would you improve capitalism? That is the question. Socialism is an attempted improvement of capitalism. Okay. Uh, so they say we're going to modify the markets in certain ways to make them more equal for certain people, but we're going to let the markets mostly still operate onto themselves. And most people are comfortable with some parameterization, tinkering, and de optimization for the greater good of society. And that's really the question is, how much tinkering do you want to have in order to have a fair society? And I think there is an objective way to answer it. it. Just has to be studied with fresh eyes. 